What's happening? What's up? What it is? What's good? This is your man, Chris Watts. You already know off top. We got to give God the glory and the honor and the praise. You know, I got to recognize my beautiful queen, my lovely wife, Allie Watts, and my three beautiful girls, Antoinette, Annalise, and Alexia. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, I simply want to say welcome to the Nine Never channel. Hopefully, you will find some type of encouragement or inspiration in today's video. Go back and check out all of our other videos. And hopefully, you will smash that subscribe button, baby, so you can uh, join us along this nine never journey i believe life is all about nine never moments and i believe today is one of your moments if you are a continuous supporter and a viewer and, and one of our continuous subscribers i just want to say thank you so much appreciate your support appreciate your feedback commenting on the videos man i love to interact with you all and we couldn't do this thing without you all so let's go ahead and start off with prayer then we're gonna get into today's word father we thank you for this day we thank you for this time we thank you for this word we give you all the glory and the honor we pray that this word should not return back into you void but it shall accomplish everything you have for it to accomplish i pray that it will land on good ground in the hearts of those that were here and it will bring back some 30 60 and 100 fold in their lives it's in your son jesus the christ's name we pray amen 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 so today guys i want to come on and share this quick prophetic encouragement to you today i understand that on our journey of destiny and purpose uh on our journey as we walk with our father yahweh that we can go through certain times and certain trials and tribulations i talk about it all the time some of us might face certain battles man it can be hard man i'm not exempt from it i don't have my battles i don't have my storms i don't have tribulations i don't have some hard times and probably won't be the last you know what i mean but we have to understand that in those times that god got our back the Bible says if God be for us, who can be against us? Some of us, we need to look in the mirror and we need to pump ourselves up by saying, who? If God be for me, who? If God be for you, who? Who can be against? Nothing of no one can be against you when you know that Father Yahweh is for you. And your prophetic encouragement today is this. If you're going through a certain battle or trial or tribulation, man, or whenever you go through one, I want you to know one thing. The fight is already fixed. I'm going to say it again. The fight, the battle, the situation is already fixed. It's a fixed fight. Now, I oftentimes in the realm of sports, particularly in the boxing arena and the boxing community, I have watched several fights. And at the end of the fight, due to one man winning when everybody thought the other one should win, uh, the most common uh, phrase that will be said is, man, that was a fixed fight. Ain't no way in the world he should have won. How did he, you know what I mean? What they were saying was that even before the fight started, the outcome was already predetermined and, and the boxing community already had things in place. I am preaching already light pole. The boxing community already had things in place, standards and stipulations set up, people in place, judges in place. They already had everything and everybody in place to make sure that the outcome would happen according to the predetermination. What am I telling you? I am telling you that every battle you face, every trial you go through, every hard season you gotta walk through, I'm here to tell you that it's a fixed fight. The outcome has already been determined. God has already predetermined who's going to win, what's going to happen, how it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, who's going to be a part of it. The outcome has already been determined. And I want to let you know this one thing, baby. You come out on top. You have already been declared the winner. You have already been declared the overcomer. You have already been declared that you are more than a conqueror. You win. It's a fixed fight. I'm reminded of 2 Chronicles, King Jehoshaphat. It was told that the nations was coming against him. And King Jehoshaphat and, and, the, and the children of Israel, they didn't know what to do. And King Jehoshaphat said, I'm going to set us up on a fast and we're going to seek God. And King Jehoshaphat and the nation, they bowed themselves, they humbled themselves before God. And they prayed to God along with fasting. And he pretty much told God, saying, God, look, Father, we can't defeat the enemies. We can't defeat the people that's coming up against us. You brought us out of Egypt. You were with our forefathers. You said you would protect us. Went through all of this. And the Bible says after he got through praying, the spirit of the Lord came upon one of the men and declared and told them, don't you worry about the battle. The battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. And I want to tell you that whatever you're going through, 
your situation, your circumstance. I want you to know that the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. It is a fixed fight. And when God responded to them, he spoke to the man of God and he gave them certain instructions. Look what he told them in 2 Chronicles. You can go back and read it. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. He told King Jehoshaphat and the company. He told them, for I will surely be with you. The battle is not yours. The battle is mine. And God told them, he said, march down to the camp and face them. Woo! I can imagine King Jehoshaphat saying, now, Lord God, Father Yahweh, now, we just prayed to you. We just said we can't defeat them. And now we can't do nothing against these people. We got nations coming against us. We praying to you. We want you to deliver us. And now you telling us to march down to face them? You telling us to march down and get prepared to fight? You just said the battle is not yours, Lord. What's happening? But he told them to march down and to face them. Although he just said the battle is mine. You have to understand, when I think about marching, I think about military formation, and I think about movement, two things with that movement. I think about movement and focus on one accord and also moving in purpose. You have to understand, what is the prophet trying to tell you? When you are faced with your trial, your battle, and your hard season, you have to move and focus, and you can't let what you're going through stop you from moving in purpose. You know what God has called you to do. You know who God has created you to be. You know who he has called you to be, and you know what he has already said according to his word that he has spoken over you. You can't let the battle stop you from getting your blessing. You can't let the problem stop you from moving in purpose. You still have to stay focus and you still have yet to move in purpose. Despite my hard season, I'm still moving in a purpose I've been called to. Despite my battle, I'm still operating destiny. Despite what's going on against me, I'm not going to let it kill me or my purpose. So you still got to march down. March down against that thing. And he told them march down against it and face it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing you going through right now, face it. Yeah, don't run from it. Face it. Face that fear. Face that hard season. Face the people that's talking about you. Face that sickness. Face that betrayal. Face the people that are back. Face that thing or face that person. Now, I don't mean walk up to them and start having a confrontation ready to throw them hands. I don't mean that. But you have to be willing to say, I'm not going to run from this. I'm going to stand flat-footed after doing all you have done to stand. The Bible says to stand. I'm going to stand right here, and I'm going to move in the focus and purpose. I'm going to face this thing. Because the battle is not mine, but the battle is the Lord's. Because it has been a fixed fight. You don't have to be afraid of losing because the fight is already fixed, baby. God said to face it. Face that thing and watch the salvation of the Lord. And King Jehoshaphat said something that was profound in his prayer. At the very end, he, as he was praying to God, he said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Woo! That got to be your testimony. When you're going through what you're going through, you have to be willing to say, in the state of confusion, not having clarity, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. You know what that means? So many people lose sight of the battle because their eyes are focused on what they're going through versus being focused on the one that's going to deliver them. Who is the prophet talking to? Their eyes are focused on a circumstance when it should be focused on their creator. He said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are focused on you. Meaning that their eyes was focused on the word of God and their eyes was focused with expectation and seeing God deliver them. You have to have your eyes focused on God. We walk by faith and not by sight. When they say that their eyes are focused on God, what they're really saying is this. They're saying that, Father, that our faith, it is focused on you. That our expectation, our, our intention, and what we want to see and our faith is focused on you. Faith coming by hearing and hearing coming by the word of God. What they're saying is we're going to walk with our eyes focused on you. We're going to walk by faith and we're going to walk by your word. And that's what you got to do in this season. You got to walk by the word, by what you know God has already decreed in his logos. But also go by the word, which you know that he has decreed and spoken to you during your prayer time. Or through and prophetic people like me, myself, and others. Your eyes have to stay up on God. And when King Jehoshaphat and them set out to march down to face the enemy, 
King Jehoshaphat saying, you know what? We finna march, we finna stand, we finna face him. But King Jehoshaphat said, what we're gonna do, we're gonna put out the singers first and we're gonna let them sing unto the Lord. And the Bible says that as they done that, by the time they got down to the camp, the enemies that were so-called coming against them was laying all out as dead bodies. Woo! So as they was going to march like God was saying, as they went to face it like God was saying, and as they began to praise, by the time they got to the battlefield, the thing that was coming to kill them was already dead. What am I trying to say? When you begin to march down and face your thing in faith and in the power and the strength of the Lord, by the time you get to the battlefield, the thing that was trying to kill you going to already be dead. It's a fixed fight. The battle is not yours, but the battle is the Lord's. King Jehoshaphat and them, they put out a sign, a reminder of the battle of Jericho. When God told them, I'm getting excited and happy inside this four expedition. When they were getting ready to march around the battle of Jericho, God said, march around the building. He said, for the first six days, march around at one time. On the seventh day, march around at seven times. And then don't try to bum rush the building and try to fight. He said, release a sound. King Jehoshaphat did exactly what they did. They released the sound. Sometimes the success is in your sound. Woo! What are you releasing in this season? What is coming out of your mouth? What sound are you releasing right now? Are you releasing the sound of doubt and worry? Or are you releasing the sound of faith? Are you releasing the sound of praise? Who is the prophet talking to right now? Death and life is in the power of the tongue. How are you using your power? Are you using it for death? Or are you using it to bring life in your situation? Who is the prophet talking to? I just want to come and encourage you today, and I pray that I have done that. That no matter what you're going through, it's a fixed fight, man. It's a fixed fight. It's a fixed fight. The outcome that already been determined. Woo! Thinking back to some of the things that I had to go through, and I had when I first when when I began to walk by faith and trust God, man, and lead the military and step out. Not knowing how, how I was going to take care of my family, moving to a new city, no money, just trusting God. I had to keep telling myself, the spirit kept reminding me that the fight is already fixed. It's a fixed fight. Every hard time, every hard thing you finna go through, the struggles, is already fixed according to God's plan. And whenever else I go through a hard time, I got, I'm going to have to remind myself, I'm, I'm in this thing with y'all. I'm not talking and preaching because I think I'm better, but I'm coming from a place where I done been there and I probably will continue to go there. I'm coming from a place of experience with passion to let y'all know that it's a fixed fight. So hopefully they, I hope, hopefully I encouraged you all. Hopefully I gave you a strength to go up, as we would say sometimes in the church, to go another father. <laughs> To, to continue to trust God and, and hopefully your, your faith has been strengthened even more today to know that it's a fixed fight. And there's plenty of, of examples throughout the Bible uh, about different things that people went through that the fight was already fixed. I'm reminded what God told the children of Israel to go into the promised land. He said, I have given you the land, but there was enemies in their land. But they had to go down and take the land, but he had already given them. How do, you, how, how, how do, I, go, how do I take what you already have given me? It's a fixed fight. Think about Joseph, everything he went through, the betrayal, the sold, being sold as a slave and going to prison. It was a fixed fight. Guy already, like I said, well, when I gave the example with the boxing community, certain when they, when they, when they claim that certain fights are fixed, how the commissioner already got certain judges and certain people set in place to make sure the fight come out according to, to, to their outcome. God already got yeah, everything set in place. Certain people, certain circumstances, certain situations. He already got things set in place to make sure that the outcome come out for your, in, in your favor. And I decree that it will. So hopefully he was encouraged by this uh, with this word today as we get ready to end. I just want you to know that it's a fixed fight. You know our motto here at Now and Never, baby. This isn't the beginning. This is forever. Together is now and never. Dream big, record, and live easy. I'm see y'all next time.